Hi and welcome back to my Dallas Cowboys blog. It's post combine, uh, March 3rd, 2014. So how about Aaron Donald? He went from being slightly overdrafted in my view at pick 17 or 16 where the Cowboys are to probably not being available for Dallas. I mean, he really put on an athletic display so it's possible that he won't even be there for Dallas anymore. That said, he wasn't that different from Sheriff Floyd, who ran a 4.8 or so at 300 pounds the year before, and Dallas did pass on Sharif Floyd. So it's up to Marinelli to sign off saying that Aaron Donald has a quick twitch that Marinelli likes. So Aaron Donald, many people say his size dictates he must play a 4.3, but his size is actually very comparable to Jay Ratliff, as are the notes about the way he operates in the trenches. I can see at 314 drafting Donaldson to play the nose because of the success Jay Ratliff had at the position. That said, no other team in the NFL has had a rat-like player at nose before or after or since Ratliff and the 3-4 left Dallas. Jadavian Clowney didn't run the short shuttle. That's very important to me because he projects as an elite pass rusher. But if his change of direction is suspect, he will amount to diddly squat in the NFL. Jets drafted some super athlete just like him five years ago who reinforced the stereotype that the Jets' front office is habitually terrible. If Jadavian Clowney can't run a short shuttle, or if his short shuttle isn't 4.2 or below, there's no way I'd draft him in the top 10. This is true of all elite edge rushing prospects. The only athletic trait that really matters for pass rushers on the edge is the ability to change direction while keeping speed. 40 times are useful for punt gunners, wide receivers, and defensive tackles, unbelievably. Uh, but that doesn't help a defensive end. Um, in sophomoric terms, I can describe why a 40 time helps a uh, defensive tackle. From the start of the play, the quarterback is straight ahead from where the tackle lines up. So in the best case scenario, the defensive player runs straight and unblocked into the quarterback. He has enough speed to collapse the pocket and he's not going to take two days to get there. For Dallas, Jay Ratliff and Jason Hatcher were all big dudes with good 40 times. One of Jason Hatcher's best sacks last year came on a play action pass where the guard shot out of his stance and into a run block on Jason Hatcher and feigned that he was going to the linebacker too. And Jason Hatcher used that moment between the feign to shoot off like a sprinter in a straight line and avoid the guard and run into the quarterback in the backfield. He then sprung like a sprinter and was able to get in there. Uh, so that straight line, that 40 time, he doesn't need to change his direction from the interior. He needs to go straight backwards. Um, so defensive ends, um, they need to change their direction because they shoot off the edge. The quarterback is actually to their right or to their left when the play starts. So they need to be able to get not only behind the line of scrimmage and behind the offensive blockers that are blocking them, they need to change direction to get after the quarterback. So running a good 40 for a edge rusher is not sufficient. You have to run a good short shuttle. Um, and until Jadavian Clowney runs a short shuttle, I would say that drafting him very high is actually suspect. There's something to be said for Javon Curse, the freak. He was a great defensive end for Tennessee back in the day, uh, back in the 90s and early 2000s. He was famous for his combine for an amazing 10-yard split. That's the time it takes for you to go 0 to 10 yards in the first phase of the 40-yard dash. You can imagine why this helps. The quarterback is less than 10 yards away from Curse at the start of the play. A get off like that indicates that the player can probably run a short shuttle as well. Because you can go from 0 to 10 so fast, you would think that you get to a stopping point. You can probably go to 0 to 10 again. Um, so while Javon Curse didn't have a very famous short shuttle, his 0 to 10 yards were so fast that as a defensive end, he still projected well as a, defense, as a uh, edge rusher. Well, it's March 3rd and it's 2014. I'm pretty frustrated because of all the combine numbers. Only the defensive lineman short shuttle hasn't been published. Those are some numbers that are the most important I get to review as a fan. Since I'm not actually scouting guys, I like to look at numbers and make sweep, sweeping judgments. Short shuttles to me are one of the most important football indicators, especially all important for defense events. So I'm really frustrated that the NFL has yet to publish the DL short shuttle numbers. Until such time, I can't really tell you what defense events I actually want. Based on what I saw from some of the tweener linebackers, this draft class could be really an all-time great draft. If the short shuttle numbers come back and only a handful of guys beat 4.2, let alone 4.4, then I will be wrong. This draft class will be overrated. My feeling is that there are going to be eight or so players coming out of this NFL draft that will achieve double-digit sacks at least once in their careers. I don't know if that's a record, but it may be close when you consider that there's only eight or so players with double-digit sacks every year. 
These eight players come from outside linebackers, defensive ends, and defensive tackles. All right, so I'll leave this blog post with that. It's frustrated, it's I'm frustrated that the NFL hasn't published the defensive lineman short shuttle combine data. And until they do, the 40 can only lie to you as to their potential. Um, while I do think the 40 can help you spot good defensive tackles, because you'll see a 300 pound or 285 pound guy run, um, and that's what you need right in the middle of your defense, it doesn't help you project guys like Jadavian Clowney or Michael Sam or Chris Smith. Um, these are players that you'll be looking at from the beginning of the draft to the very end of the draft. And, you know, a short shuttle can take a guy that is relatively anonymous otherwise and suddenly turn him into a great NFL player um, seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, so until that data comes out, I can't really even project what my draft board is and what I really want Dallas to do in the first round. Um, Coney Ely, for example, had a bad combine workout or bad enough that he went from being a mid first round pick to now looking at a bottom of the first round. But if he actually had a strong short shuttle and they haven't reported that while they reported all this other bad data, then Coney Ely would be a guy that would climb. Um, so there's a lot of things that could change and without having this data, the most important stuff as a Dallas Cowboy fan, you want to see what Dallas can do to fix their pass rush. But without the short shuttle times, I really can't anticipate what players Dallas would like. And I will leave it off with that. Uh, thank you for joining.